Good afternoon, everybody. Hope everybody's well. So you can see from the ticker at the bottom of the screen. Uh, finally finished the uh, Italia Zundap KS750 with sidecar. Okay, so I've heard absolutely tons and tons about this kit, and it didn't matter how bad it was. Uh, I just didn't seem to be able to be put off by building it. Okay. So started it. Uh, I actually got the box out and got got me sprawled already, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, on the thirtieth, thirty first of December, first first of January, uh, last year this year. I thought, here we go, crack on. Uh, One hundred and five hours I've put into it, and uh, it, it has taken uh, quite a bit. It's taken a lot of work, but the thing is, is my first bike with a sidecar, I'm looking over there because that's where it is. Uh, my first bike with a sidecar, uh, and uh, you, you know, as as deaf as it sounds, uh, definitely not being put off by all the negativity, which I wouldn't want you to either. Because you know, when you're watching YouTube videos, uh, it, it's one of the first things that you do when you when you come to either buy a kit or when, when you get one out of your stash and you think, oh, I think I'll go and get that one. Let's go and have a look. And it's it, like, you know, YouTube. And for this particular build, uh, I think there's only one build uh, guy that's actually on it. So when, when I started looking at that then and you sort of like looking and thinking, no, he's done it in sequence. Sometimes there's a bit of music on it sort of puts you off maybe once or twice. Uh, and it can be really, really difficult to sort of like get into the nooks and crannies of the kit, if you will. So I've changed this video up ever so slightly. Uh, I hope you're looking forward to uh, watching it, watching me build it. Uh, there's no video, it's all stills, but I'm going to go through it piece by piece so that you can all see just exactly what it is that I've done, okay? At the end, uh, I think there's a little sequence of finished build pictures. Uh, it's going to go in the cabinet. Would I build it again? You'll have to wait and say I'll have to ask that question a little bit later. Okay. But for now, going to start right at the very beginning with we're going to go through the instructions uh, little by little, hopefully in sequence. I think I've just had a quick flick through. Uh, I think that they're about 98% in sequence. Uh, that's a bit precise, isn't it? But... I'm hoping that with the sequence that I've put together, you can see through the instructions, I can give you the pitfalls of what uh, what to potentially avoid whilst you're building the kit, because there are some intricate parts that will snap off, fall off. And I did have a couple of issues, I'm not going to lie, uh, because there are people that watch videos, you know, and, and obviously if I sit here and go, oh, it's a piece of piece, it comes straight to the top of the pile, the crack on, I haven't told them about the pitfalls. And before you know it, you know, you, you get a little bit disheartened. And on the other hand, if I say, oh, it's an absolute nightmare, literally influencing people to put it back to the bottom of the pile or even sell it. Okay. And that's not what this video is about. This video is about me building it, taking loads of photos I've gone along across the 105 hours, and then hopefully you can make your mind up. Okay, uh, quick shout out to Graham Pearson, uh, a good friend of mine. Uh, Graham sent me a message saying, you know, exactly the same as what I've just said. I've heard bad things, I've heard this, I've heard that, and then he's left a little space, and then underneath that he said, come on then, Matt, what's it like? Uh, and obviously, I didn't want to post, put it on my Facebook page uh, and go through everything when I, I can do a video and then everybody can watch it, all right? because that's that's literally only fair so with that uh let's just have a look i'm going to share my screen i'm going to pop out of this one uh and i'm going to click onto here uh which puts up the image <clears throat> the image of or it should do it should put up the image uh of uh, the bike at the moment let's just have a little look here so we're starting off with a little bit of box art. Then I'm down in your bottom left-hand corner. So we're starting off with a little bit of box art. It's the Italieri Zundap KS750 with sidecar. One in nine scale. Great box art on the front. Really sort of lures you in. Uh, and you think that does look a little bit tasty. Okay. 
it does come in different colour schemes, uh, and I think we'll cover that as we get to the end. So as you can see there, bottom left-hand corner, I've dated that 30th at 12th, 2023, and that's when I'd literally finished uh, the Revel uh, London bus for a good friend of mine at work. Uh, and, I, and I'm literally, you know, I talk, I talk to people on, on Facebook and on Messenger, on YouTube, dropping Instagram and, and now on TikTok as well. Uh, and they're all saying, what's next, what's next, what's next? Uh, and I kind of knew that this was going to be it. I picked it up at Telford uh, in November in 2023. So quick picture there then. That's obviously for my reference, just with date on because I wanted to stamp date it so that I know when I'd started it and when I'd finished it. So straight away onto your instructions then. Let's do what I said uh, that I'm going to do. Okay, now I've got two screens on so I can see, uh, and hopefully you can see all that picture. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to rush it, but obviously I'm on a, a bit of a time constraint, so you'll have to bear with me. Uh, obviously, you can go back to it whenever you want, uh, if it's going to help. So... So I've started on section one this time. Normally, when I build an aircraft, uh, I will uh, start on missiles and bombs first. But I thought, you know what? This is, I'm brand new to this bike. Let's do it in sequence and let's see if we can put it together for everybody that's watching. So step one, then we've got uh, we've got a footboard and a radiator uh, at right at the beginning. Uh, and I have put some of my self comments on. Number one, paint each piece separately, obviously. And number two, to hide the inner centre seam, use a square of painted styrene. Uh, and number three, the seat doesn't have to go in now. So if you look at the bottom of the picture there, you can see that I've got the footboard. Uh, and obviously, I've painted the aluminium uh, radiator, the foot warmer separately, glued it on. Uh, and then uh, a false floor panel. Because when you do join those two halves together, there's obviously a seam down there in the middle. Uh, it is unsightly, and it's also a proper cow bag to get in with a sanding stick. Uh, so the easy answer is to get a sheet of uh, square, uh, styrene, plastic, plastic card, some people call it. Cut it to size, uh, paint it in the same colour that you've painted the inners, uh, and stick that on. All right, number two then. Uh, seat, the seat comes on uh, as separate sprue and it's almost like a, it's like a black plastic but it's it's not like a styrene plastic, it's really really funny uh, how did I paint that, so that is primed in black, everything is primed with MRP uh, not MRP, so I missed the surface of 1500 black uh, once I'd done that it was overlaid then with an MRP uh, light brown, I do believe, if I can have a look, which is a colour call out of MRP 103. So that's brown. Uh, and then to get all that scratch and that really dark, nice leather colour then, uh, I actually put some AK streaking grime onto my brush, stabbed that on uh, with product out of the lid once I give it a shake. Uh, and that brought up that brown effect. The scratches were done with cocktail sticks and just pushing that paintbrush in just on an angle, just a little bit of an edge, but I'm sure that you've all got your own way uh, and I can do that. I need to do something about this seam. Uh, so I've dry fit, uh, I've glued the two halves together and I've just plonked the seat in, conscious of that little line there but very conscious of this line down here. And that's the one that I was talking about. Uh, and again, you can see there, now we're saying seamless floor panel because uh, the piece of plastic art, if, I, if you look at the edge of the seat there, uh, the front edge of that seat, and then if I just go back a couple uh, and you look at that bottom right-hand picture there, you can see exactly what that's doing. Okay, it's getting rid of that unsightly seam in there. Bit of a trick, obviously. Uh, and then painted the grey part once I realised, well, once I didn't, once James realised that I'd painted it brown and uh, we were chatting one night and said, oh, Mark, the pipe, it's grey, mate. And I said, right, yeah, fair enough. Uh, so I took it all back out because I'd only dry fit it and painted it grey. Uh, and you can see up there uh, at the front of the sidecar, 
We're looking kind of seamless, uh, but not perfect. And again, across the front there, uh, I'm trying my hardest to get rid of that seam. Uh, and I did put seam sanded out, but it didn't uh, It didn't take, uh, it wasn't an overnight success. Certainly, you have to put some work into getting that seam out underneath and on top. Uh, and you can see they're seamless underneath because obviously you carry that on all the way. The two halves do fit together really, really well. Uh, no ejector pin marks. There's nothing really of any concern there. Uh, absolutely smashing. Uh, but I did paint on the inside and I did use a 0 0.01 mil plastic card. Uh, and you can see there where I've left it. I've not painted it there uh, because, as we all know, paint and glue are not good bedfellows either. Uh, and I needed it to adhere to that plastic. Okay. Uh, stepping on to step three and four then, uh, number one, I've written my comments. You don't need to attach 7A, 9A, 56A at this point. Let me just point these out. Uh, so 7A, uh, is that back, uh, part. 9A is that back part. Uh, and you don't need to attach that either. Okay. There is a little bit of a thing, uh, a little bit sort of further on in the book, uh, that lets you build a a little briefcase if you will uh, a little briefcase of uh, tools and equipment that actually fit in the back of there and if you glue that down uh obviously you're not going to be able to see it okay can we uh, can we attach uh, these parts here at the front this sort of like y shape yes you can uh Try, you know, you've got to get rid of that seam. You've got to get rid of that seam, though, at the front before you start doing anything. Uh, concentrate on getting the seam out. Number three, you can attach, uh, and I've put my arrow up to there, uh, for these one, two, three, four, and the two on the side, five, six little bits. You can attach them, uh, but make sure that you get that seam out first. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to keep banging them off with your sanding stick. So, on to chassis. So, I've put step one. Uh, builds up really nice. Builds up nicely. Uh, but number two, be careful with step 11 and 12. We'll have a look at that in a second. The leaf springs and the leaf spring handles are the wrong way around. And obviously, you don't know until you start building it. But if you look at step 11, it's showing you the leaf springs. And if you look at stage 12, there's two leaf spring hooks, which are numbered 43A, uh, and there's a pair on the other side as well. Uh, and I do believe that they're the wrong way round. Obviously, I found out that the hard way. Uh, not detrimental in the end, uh, because I did manage to get a little bit of a butcher. Uh, step three, uh, number three, uh, step 14. Let's go down to step 14. That's down in that bottom corner. Uh, and I've said dry fit the lights with the mud guard, dry fit to the chassis because it's easy to get the lights the wrong way around. And again, uh, guess how I found out that little piece of information. So you've got, you've got your mud guard there, uh, and you've got a light there and one at the front and it's ve they look very, very similar. Uh, and it's very, very easy to get those the wrong way around, Dolphus. So uh, that there is the chassis just uh, just built by the looks of it. Uh, I love this bit of detail here in bottom left-hand corner of the hook. Uh, that looks absolutely smashing. Uh, it's a very, very easy assembly to put together. There's no drama with that. And you can see there, uh, they're, they're like sort of pillboxes, uh, two on either side of sidecar at the front, and then one at the rear of the motorcycle. And actually, if you just look there at the light fitting that I've got on my mud guard, I think at that step, I should have seen it. It's quite easy to tell <coughs> that they're the wrong way, chuffing round. Can I remedy it? I suppose I can when I feel like it. Bit of black primer on then, and again, you've got to be careful that you, you know, you, you've painted inside your sidecar. So last thing you want to be doing is getting primer all over, uh, all over inside of this. So I absolutely crammed mine full of uh, sponge uh, and blow towel and taped it all off, etc., etc., to make sure that I could 
could do all that. Okay, step five. We're only on to step five already. And we're talking here about uh, the mount for the gun at the front. So you can attach step five, six, but not seven and eight. Let's go through them then. So top left-hand corner, number five, adjacent to that number six. Yes, you can put those in. But in my opinion, this isn't the law. This is not the law. This is only me suggesting a best practice what I found. Step seven, two little brackets, one on either side. And step eight, forget it. You don't need to put them on now. Build them for sure. Prime and paint, absolutely. All the units, but then just put them to one side. They'll come in handy a bit later on. All right. Uh, one out of sequence then there. Look, I've put installed and you can see I've got a big fat clamp holding everything down, but it did work. Uh, right, moving on. So step 15, number one, I've put paint the mud guard and attach it uh, as in step 15 on your bottom left hand corner. Uh, and number two, attach the chassis to the sidecar, but remember to keep these off for now. And I've put the box there. I think the carriage sort of letters or the sandwiches or flask of coffee, whatever. Uh, but you can actually do step 16 uh, in full, okay? You can get all that together. And that's more or less sidecar, more or less done. Apart from them two boxes at the front, uh, and there is a little bit of a hose attachment as well. So apart from them two, there's a little bit of hose. Uh, you've painted on the inside. You've obviously put it together you've done your plastic card sheet you've put your board in you've put your radiator in you can leave that back end off for now like i've said attach your chassis with the mud guard on don't put your wheel on not yet not required okay and that's more or less that side of it done so no problems at all there okay just watch for them lights just watch for them lights after that, we're moving on to engine. And you can see engine builds up nicely. I've put on there on step 24. Uh, 17, 18, all, all tidy. There's no real fit issues at all with any of that. Seams, obviously, there's a seam. It will need a tiny little sand out. Uh, and there you go. That's sort of like together. I suppose if I've got one little piece of advice... Uh, the parts that you can see there, which is two hoses, one on either side, I would probably leave those off, again, in hindsight, uh, I would probably leave those off until right at the very end. Now, through this video, I am going to say leave it off right till the very end. The problem is, is that there's like 20 jobs that I've left right till the very end. Right at the very end is, it's you know, you've, you've built it, weathered it, done absolutely everything, and then you should have a box of bits, uh, a little plastic tub, and I've got one here to show you. Okay, and that's where I put all my bits. We've all got one. Uh, that's where I put all my bits. And when I say attached right at the very end, that's what I mean. Okay, moving on. Uh, so, yeah, still on, still on the engine, and I think we've got a little bit of gearbox housing there. No issues here. Uh, including the wheels and tyres, uh, just a little bit of rubber to, uh, to move off. Uh, and if I just blow that one up, uh, I'm going to blow that up and I'm going to move it up a little bit just so that hopefully you can see. Uh, we've got a bit of a before and an after here. The one on the right, before weathering. The one on the left, uh, after weathering. Obviously, I've, after I've given it some product, we'll just say that. Okay. So the actual motorbike frame itself, there are a couple of holes to drill uh, up at the front end, you can see there. Uh, not difficult, but again, just be careful. There are some, uh, you get two different kinds of wires in this kit. One's black, one's clear. Uh, but you can see uh, that uh, I'm sort of jumping ahead here a little bit. It's a photo that's kind of out of sequence maybe ever so slightly uh you can see i've just uh put the wiring loom in then i've got the engine in as well okay that's the one that i should have shown you uh that's that's the two halves uh together with the engine in uh, and it's all chromed up again it were all painted black uh all separately before i put it in 
Uh, once I painted it black, then I went in with some, let me just have a look, extreme metal. Uh, and I think I used the gun metal on that. Okay. And obviously you've got to put the tire in as well at that stage. Uh, and there's the actual instruction for it then. Step 31. Uh, don't forget to put that pin in uh, right up in top right hand corner. I suppose you wouldn't really. Uh, step 32, putting the other side on. 33. I actually, if you look down at the bottom of the page, no issues. Just don't forget to put these two in like some doofus did. But don't worry, I did actually put them in in the end after 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 I put the front fork on. Uh, and I'm and I'm having a little natter, and I'm saying to my mate Paul at the Wirral, I've got me motorbike frame here, and I've got this assembly with the wheel on and the handlebars and everything. I've slot it in, and I've come to put it all on top. And why is it rattling like shit? And luckily for me, Paul, on my shoulder, so to speak, he says, "Let me have a look at the instructions for you, Mark. I'll get right back to you." And while we're nattering, and he's having a look. Uh, lo and behold, he says, I'll tell you what it is, mate. Did you put in uh, that that little step there on, on step 33? Uh, and I said, I'm pretty sure that I did, mate. But uh, to be honest, I, I, I honestly can't remember. Let me go back through my sprues, which I did. And lo and behold, there they were. Okie dokie. So let's just have a little look here. So once all that goes together... Uh, there's, there's no other issues at all. Everything is absolutely fine. Share the screen again. Uh, that little part on 34, no drama. Uh, and 36, a bit of a, I want to say muffler, but I don't know if I'm right or not. Okay, we'll call it the back exhaust system. We'll leave it at that. I'm not going to go and try and get myself all technical and, and beat myself up. Step 37, keep off. Uh, to later and there you go uh, and i've highlighted in the little sort of squiggly pen mark you can see those little bits there they are screaming to be attached but they are doubly screaming to be knocked off at some point during your weathering during your general handling little things like that you can leave those off step 38 is a couple of hoses they can go on no problem step 39 Little bit of a pain in ass, if I'm absolutely honest. But uh, let's let's score pain in assness. Uh, it's about a seven <clears throat> because you can see that down at the bottom on step 39, there's some kind of attachment, but that is shaped to go into that recess there. That's absolutely fine. But come up to your other piece, uh, and uh, I did struggle with that. Now, uh, when I'm struggling to get a couple of parts. To, to actually fit and adhere, uh, I have got one absolutely fantastic product, uh, and I'm sure that you've all seen it or got it yourselves, uh, and it's that one, which is a super glue accelerator. Doesn't work with every kind of super glue, I must say that. I have tried it with different ones in the past, uh, but the one that it definitely does work with is that, uh, which is just a Loctite, okay? One little dab of glue, uh, and one little, tsh, cheers, Dave, uh, of the old spray. And I'll tell you what, Accelerator looks super glow like absolute granite. All right, does not move anywhere. So let's just zoom out a little bit. Are you with me so far? We're okay. Uh, so step 40 is the seat, uh, the seat brace. So is 41. And you can see step 42 there, that is attaching that on. Uh, and that is up there at the back of the bike, the top right-hand corner. That's the seat brace, okay? Now, the exhaust muffler there, uh, again, I didn't put it on to start with uh, because I wanted to be able to be in control, if you will, of the build, and I kept dry-fitting it and looking at it, and I never, ever attached it until I absolutely needed to. Step 43, looks like we've got a fuel tank. That's obviously uh, a piece of easiness. Uh, so is step 44, the installation of that. And you can see there, step 45. And again, I'm just going to zoom in for you. Uh, step 45, sprue go and accelerator. Uh, and I've said these are on the black sprue and only get attached. Oh, no, that's a different one. Uh, sprue go and accelerator. I'm getting in front of myself. 
Can you see the little mountains there? I'm just trying to waggle my, my mouse, my cursor around that. You do get the springs in the kit. They do attach under the seat. And again, great, great tip there. Super glue and accelerator because it makes it an unbreakable bond. Uh, but the little, uh, the little attachments there to go on, uh, all that, uh, once it's on, it does it does work. The spring does work. Look at me bouncing up and down. The spring does work, but at the same time, it is wanting to sort of ping off and come off. Okay. Uh, let's have a little look. So, uh, where's that? So we've got we've got part. Uh, these are in the black spring only. All right. So if you look down at the bottom. Did I, did I put them on? Yeah, right. I'm going to zoom in because you do need to know this. You really, really do need to know this one. So you can see there on step 48, there's two straight rods, right? Okay. Uh, with, with some little attachments on. And obviously, I'm looking then in the sprue guide. I'm looking in the sprue guide. Uh uh, uh, and I'm thinking, what, 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 where the bleeding hell are these? And I can't, I can't see them on the scroll. Can't see them for love and the money. Uh, and and honestly, at the end, it's like, do you know what? Sorry, let's move on. It's it's not actually. It, it's a little piece. I thought it was. I thought it were going to be like grey plastic, but it's not. They're actually on the black plastic sprue. And what they are is those two straight pieces. They're actually uh, sort of hoses, if you will, for the, the go up the fork, up the front fork, across the handlebars, because on this particular kit, you do actually get some hand warmers if you want to attach them uh, for the winter version. But now, luckily, even though I've got the uh, radiator in the front, I didn't do the entire winter version. Uh, and again, it was Paul... Uh, from the Wirral that noticed that for me. So thank you ever so much, mate. Really, really appreciated that. Luckily, I was like, Phew. tidy, got away with that one. Okay, step 47, that little back bar at the back, uh, that's that's obviously so that you can pull the bike up. You don't need to attach that yet because uh, that's quite a good fitting. All right. Uh, and again, back onto the seat. So you can see, uh, you can see there that primed it in black, Prime everything in black. Uh, primed it in black and then gone for the 103, uh, which is the MRP, MRP brown. Okay. Uh, and then stabbed it with the streaking grime, the AK streaking grime. I'm only going to tell you what I've used, right? Not going to try and pull it you on. End it day, it's entirely up to you. That was the rear seat finished. But again, once I've looked at that, Put it in my little butt, put it in my little tub. Uh, I just sort of thought, do you know what? That needs revisiting. So uh, put some more AK on uh, and literally just started blending it and blending it with a brush until I got uh, a, a little bit better texture and a little bit better colour. You can see that there. That one's a little bit too light. And that one's a much more leather coloured seat. So the fuel tank uh, that we talked about two minutes ago is added and the rear seat is added uh, and up to press, all is looking good. I did have a little bit of a problem. I uh, did have a little bit of a problem with uh, with that area there where the fuel tank sits into the fuselage. <coughs> and when I think back, that were my fault. That were nothing to do with the kit, okay? I think maybe I'd had a long day at work. I was tired, I came in, I, I built, uh, and it's same as driving. Don't drink and drive. Uh, same as modelling with me. Don't model after a long day at work because it balances us up. Uh, and I did actually end up having to put a little bit of filler in there. But when I got that filler in, I just get it a little touch down the seam with the cocktail stick and made it look like a weld. Okay. And it takes up to step 49 before we really start. Uh, and get, uh, it's not a problem, it's not a problem, okay, it's not a problem, uh, but uh, a little bit of a challenge, if you will, because 
Uh, I will put the picture back up, and if you've read it already, three hands with 14 fingers required on each hand because it's like, what the chuffing hell? Okay, so when you get up to step 49, uh, you, you need to go under your table and pull out that bag of patience uh, because if you've got none of that, you can forget it. It's not difficult. It's It's not a difficult thing to build. It's just a difficult thing to put together. Uh, same thing, Mark, you're chuffing. Anyway, so let's start up on 49. No problem. It's not until you hit 50, right? Step 50. Let's just do a little bit of the old zooming in here. So you've got a piece there that's straight down the middle. That is not an O-ring. It's a piece of plastic. And obviously, it's on the sprue. And it doesn't matter how close you cut it off to the sprue gate, you're going to have a little bit of sticky out stuff. So the, the, the ring itself is minute uh, and you've got to be able to sand that off. So the best tip that I've got for you there, and again, you know, you said chuffy now, Mark, move on because we know what we're doing. The best tip I've got for you there is actually just to get your sanding stick, come on out, just to get your sanding stick on your bench Get that little piece in your finger. You can do tweezers, but if it pings off, I don't want any letters to Esther. And literally just rub it, rub it uh, a, a, across that piece there, and that should hopefully get rid of those burrs, okay? Same for that one there, 87D. And all this mechanism has got to go inside there, along with step 49, which is there on the left-hand side that you've already built. And you can see that, oh, yeah, well, I'm going to pop that through that hole and that O-ring's going to hold it in. No drama. But then, if you, in fact, I'll just go up a little bit, look to the other side. If you look there, that's a clearer picture. You can see that that piece, right, is coming through here and held in with that O-ring. Now, that can't be glued because it's part of the suspension system in that's inside the fork. And at the same time, you've got to put this part in, into that hole there, with an O-ring, and that. Okay, and that part there again, 90, 90D, it's absolutely tiny. And not only that, but at the same time, you've got to put that spring inside with that, right? And it's extremely fiddly. I'm not going to say it's difficult, I'm going to say it's fiddly. Okay, uh, so once you've mastered all that, and I think that took me a good a good hour and a half, couple of hours to get them both done, you do actually end up with, with this uh, assembly here, 52 and 53. 54, I've circled the front number plate, and I've said attach it at the end of the build, for sure. <coughs> Cut it off, uh, because the inside of the plate is white, but the trim on the outside is the same colour as what you're going to do with the actual bike. So for sure, cut it off, prime it, paint it, da-da-da, but then just toss it into your bits bin. You don't need to add it on now, because if you do that, you know what's going to happen. You're handling it, you're general handling. Don't matter how good you are at just generally handling shit, you're going to knock it. And on that number plate, there is only one locating tab and that's the tab at the back it's a tiny tiny little pin there isn't one at the front so when you glue that into your mud guard you've got to hold your mud guard looking at you straight on and literally be able to move it from left to right to make sure that the orientation's dead straight build it for sure build it paint it for sure but leave it leave it off it don't need to go on right until the end okay uh, and then the first real sort of like frustrating part, if you will, uh, you can see that my handlebar snapped here twice. It's not, it's not because uh, it's a flimsy kind of a thing, flimsy handlebar. Uh, it's because you're, you're picking it up. Uh, number one, that little nubbin that I've got my cursor on there, that takes a hose. Uh, and just over here, I'm hoping that my cursor's showing those two take hoses then you've got to put your grips on then you've got to put i think it's either your clutch or whatever uh you, your back brake maybe 
and constantly handling it uh as you know it makes the parts a little bit too weak uh so mine snapped twice but luckily thank god uh super glue and accelerator okay front uh front suspension then so i've got my springs inside there uh i've got the the mounting rod there that goes up inside the front end the wheels on no weathering as yet okay don't need any of that that's it with it all dry fit and if you can see there that there's the hole uh there's the hole for the front uh the front number plate but again if i just scroll over that's not a hole and you don't need to drill it out because it's actually on the number plate itself there is not a hole for it to sit into so if you drill a hole wasting your time and you're not gonna have to fill it up anyway okay beautiful next uh completely out of sequence but i thought i'd put it in did try a new product for this one uh and that is another i think it's another uh ak product if i do remember rightly so let me just glasses on let me just have a little look here it's not that one it's not that one it's not that one it's not uh that one oh actually it's a combination i do i do apologize it's a combination let me just get rid of that and make myself uh center of attention so it's not uh it's not one product it's a combination of two uh one is that one which is rust streaks if you can see probably back to front i'm not sure how my webcam is working but i'm hoping that you can pick that up so rust streaks and where's my microphone there it is it is a liquid <clears throat> and then the other one which is probably exactly the same is called a light rust wash and i'll just offer that up for you a light rust wash okay and that is from megamo now the beauty of that one is i'm going to share my screen again because i need to zoom in just so that you can see the beauty of that last product is when i put it on and left it to dry on that leaf spring can you see there it did actually turn out pretty much like rust uh i'm gonna come down as well okay because we know how rusty leaf springs get do we i don't know i'm not a mechanic but that's those two products there okay uh which turned out all right i suppose in the end so let's move on step 56 uh step 56 uh, i've put on there leave off till end of build and what i'm talking about there is the grips and the two uh, i don't know what they are like i said i don't know if the clutch and brake i've no idea okay but my main thing there is no issues i didn't get any issues at all uh with any of that particular sequence of build i'm just going to blow that up uh, and again look leave off till the end uh, and that's step 61, okay? Not step 60, step 61. You don't need to put that on because at the end of the day, if you're going to matte coat it or gloss it, you can see that that top dome part there, that's obviously a clear part because it's your it's your speedo. Uh, and last thing that you want to be doing uh, is fogging that off or making it worse. 63 to 64, 5 and 6, all these here, absolutely no issues. I'm not going to dwell on it when there's no issues. We don't need to labour on that, okay? And then onto a picture then. Let's just have a look. So we've got pretty much the two seats on, the rider's grip. Uh, we've got, uh, there is a lot of work still to do in here. A lot still to do in there. That's why I have not glued those on at this stage at this particular stage let me just go back one we're still on to step we're up to step 70 here and the sidecar is still not glued on to the bike i must must stress that okay this is where your patience comes in i must have dry fit my motorbike to my sidecar like a hundred chuffing time I'm, I'm desperate to do it but don't don't you will absolutely kick yourself later because there's still a load of work and here it comes so number one i've put steps 71 and 72 no comment uh, and that's because uh, and i have blanked it out that's because that's the uh hand warmer 
uh, kind of thing for the handlebars. Can't comment on it because I didn't do it. But step 73 to 76, fiddly but manageable, uh, and leave uh, leave till closer to the end of the build. How many more times am I going to say that? Look, put them on if you want, but I'm telling you now, they're coming off. Okay. Uh, so I'm just going to zoom in on them just to show you. Uh, that one, you can see, I think we've got a kickstart pedal. Uh, no, sorry, uh, uh, the, the rider's footrest uh, and the rear person's footrest. They can stay off. Now, this one, step 74, that's the side of the bike where the sidecar fits on. So up to this point, once you, that sidecar should be all done now. You, you can actually add these on if you want, but me personally, I've left it until I've uh, glossed it, uh, deckled it, and weathered it before I put those on, right? That's how far uh, towards the end. That's how close towards the end I left it to put those bits on, all right? And again, step 75, they're on the same side as the, what the sidecar attaches. Okay, so be careful what you're doing. Uh, step 76, exactly the same. What, you, you do obviously need to put all that on before you attach your sidecar. But for the process of building this, uh, I, I did not put those on until everything was painted and i was painting it as i was going along obviously because you can't just uh wholly paint it i painted the whole lot the engine you've seen were already painted uh everything were done uh I, but I, I definitely needed to decolate gloss it and decolate uh before I, I i i put those those stages on okay because at the end of the day decals aren't going to come off all right let me uh, let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, step 77 then uh, is the same attachment as what's on the front of the sidecar. And again, by all means, uh, build it. Just be careful because if you glue that bugger shut, you're not going to be able to get that casing, which is shown on step 78. Uh, so 77 and 77, that's a typo, uh, can be attached closer to the end of the build. Uh, but attaching the spare makes this whole assembly really heavy. Uh, I thought I'd actually put a picture of that on. Maybe it's on the next slide. It is. Okay. So when you attach that piece there, don't forget, we haven't finished yet. So don't don't put it on. Don't put it on. And I've used a bit of a, a bit of computer genius there just to show the red color is for illustration only. <clears throat> now on these parts, you do get two tiny, tiny little lugs. Uh, but after I put mine on, I looked at that and thought, that ain't sticking. So I actually snipped them off, uh, drilled a hole through, as you can see. Uh, and that's on that particular part there. So on the inside, there's a little lug. And on the inside of that side, there's a little lug. And you do have to sort of wrestle it to get it in. Sod that. That's just going to snap all day. So drilled the holes out and then put a piece of 0 0.6 millimeter bar uh, all the way through, cut to length to make that a lot, a lot stronger. Okay. That way, because that with the spare, that now can lift up and down uh, because inside you've got this. However, you can see from my comment there, it doesn't all fit in. Uh, according to step 85, uh, put it onto that little bit of a backing plate at the bottom there. Drop it in. That's why you don't put that spare tyre on just yet. Drop it all in. Bob's your uncle and is your fan. And is your fan. Fan is your aunt. Although in this day and age, it could be either either, couldn't it? Let's not be... Uh, so, uh, you have to be really careful with that and decide what you want to do. Now, uh, to get away with it, get away with it. Uh, it'll do crew what i did what i cut it there and i cut it there on that bit of briefcase and i just put them in separately all right but you can see i've had a right good go there at, uh, at painting my little one in nine bits and then finally tiny but beautiful do you know what if you've watched my other videos i did do a cave move 
not so long since because I wanted to basically be able to get a better backdrop for the people that watch me and not all that shite over there. But in that move, I don't know how, don't ask and I will never know because it's one of life's mysteries. I, I actually lost my gun. That's not jail slang. Uh, I lost my gun. Uh, and I was chatting with James Gross one of the nights with Paul and I'm, you know, sobbing my heart out, literally. Uh, and he went, Mark, chuff in hell, I'll send you mine up, mate. And he did. Uh, and you can see the pre uh, built it again. Uh, that's very, very simple uh, paint scheme, black primer, and then dry brushed in in a gun metal. I did go for the uh, for the wooden type of stock uh, for simple reason being I thought I'd done a really, really nice job with that. How on earth did you make that look like that then, mate? Well, remember the seat, primed in black, painted airbrushed with the MRP 103 brown. A shake on the uh, AK Streaking Grime. Uh, it is my favourite go-to product. Let's see if we can just have a look there. There you go. AK Streaking Grime. Good shake. Lid off. Down you go. Uh, and then a stippling brush. I ain't got no expensive stippling brushes, but I have got some paint brushes that are a bit knackered and a bit sort of like... Bleh. So it's a stab in and a stab round. And look, at end of day, you know, the uh, on modelling... It's not always about there's a certain way and you've got to do this. Sometimes, look, lads, boys and girls, you've just got to have a go. And that's what I did. Just got to have a go. Okay. A couple of little fiddly parts to fit on the gun. Not going to lie. Uh, let me just see if I can come back a little bit. So I've put there, look, tiny, top right-hand corner. You're not even looking because you're not looking at that. Top right-hand corner, tiny. Let's zoom in a little bit. I am conscious that I've been waffling on now for nearly 47 minutes. Those two little parts there, absolutely minute. And when I say minute, <coughs> I do mean minute. So two, three, four schemes on this bike. You can see that uh, this one's the grey one. Okay. Then you do get this sort of like uh, camo -y one. Uh, and then you do get a pure, creamy, deserty, yellowy one. I went for the grey. Grey's my colour. I do love a grey bird. The decals, each one of these, we've got different front number plates with different rear number plates, etc., etc. So you just choose which one corresponds with your colour. Thought I'd throw that one up because that is the tyres uh, before and after. Uh, and then here we go. So uh, I've rattled on for 47 minutes. So I'm just going to quickly go through now uh, the pictures. Okay, I'm going to go through my pictures of the finished piece. So you can see that's the side that has the uh, sidecar fit on. Uh, and it does actually fit. I'm not sure if my cursor is, is showing on that screen. But the back end of it slots into that. And the front end of it slots onto that. OK, but then you've got a hole there and a hole there. And in there, there's two corresponding bars that you put in to actually lock the bike to the sidecar. OK, if you don't put those on the sidecar and the motorbike, do that. You've got to put those two brace arms on uh, to make it sit upright. And again, I'm just playing with my camera and my phone. It's all done on my phone, this. Uh, just to try to get a couple of different angles, okay, uh, just so that you can see. One of my favourites, absolutely love that. I've gone for a completely uh, white background, uh, and I kept the subject low uh, just to get a little bit of uh, little bit of depth and space on that. Uh, again, just a different angle. You can see there. I've got. You can see the foot warmers and. All the engine part looking looking quite the part. I have muckied up that back uh, number plate. Uh, that is just the sidecar on its own. Then, uh, so again, let's uh, let's zoom in. Let's see what's Mark done here to do this. So all this muckiness here, uh, it's a combination of uh, raw oils stabbed on and then streaked off, just blended in. 
ever so slightly with a little bit of that humbrol enamel thinner why humbrol enamel thinner because it's the only one i trust okay you can see that the decals are on <clears throat> uh you can see that i've put the leather straps on with that top part number plate and light fitting all on okay moving across weathering it's literally just flicking the old brush like you do just to get a little bit of splatter on okay rusty exhaust pipes and one thing or another no drama there all really really nice i can zoom out again it's out to do really uh, and again, it's just showing the weathering uh, and the bike literally coming together. There we've got them attached then. And I finally put the gun on on the top. Okay. I hope this is wetting your appetite. I hope that, uh, you know, you're watching this and going, do you know what? Actually, that doesn't seem too bad at all. <coughs> and for one in nine scale piece, it, it is it is quite nice. I've got to say, it's, it's, it's chunky. It's over there. I'll get it in a second. You do get the option of having the clear lens on the uh, front headlight, uh, but I went for the night uh, night headlight version. And again, just mucking it up, not not too much. What I said on my Facebook post was I wanted this build to look used, but not abused. Uh, and I do, uh, I, I did actually get that one from. Uh, I think I got it from a uh, uh, Zach. I'm not quite sure, but that's just about it uh it, it's it's cracking it's absolutely cracking not not too bad at all people have asked me you know uh about fit issues and, and one thing or other and i hope that i've explained all them i'm just going to stand up and reach over there uh just to see if i can pick it up which i can oh there you go and bring that into shot uh, where's my camera? There it is. Let me make myself uh, the subject so that you can all see. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, as, as far as I've got it in my stash, I'm thinking about building it. What's it like? It's actually really, really nice. It comes together all right. Look, with any kit, you're always going to get a couple of little fiddly bits, aren't you, that are a little bit, oh, chuffing hell. But at the end of the day, 105 hours, of a course of 27 days and if you do the maths that's nearly four hours a day and that is how much time i spend in here quite literally uh if, if you if you take your time you know i've given you best best advice i can give you uh as far as following uh slightly out of sequence don't do this save it till end of build etc etc <coughs> you build it your own way Build it your own way, but, you know, you might start knocking a few bits off one thing or another. I'll give you the best advice that I possibly can uh, to, to make it something like, Graham, uh, answering your question then, mate, you know, you've got it in your stash, or are, are, are you going to buy it? Are you going to build it? Whatever. It's, it's sound, mate. It's absolutely sound. The overall piece, the instructions, I would probably give uh, a three... Uh, I would probably give a 3 out of 10 for your instructions, mate. Instructions, simple reason being is because there's uh, there are letters on the sprue pictures in the... What's, what's this? Uh, there are letters in the sprue guide. But then when you get your sprues out, mate, there's no chuffing letters on. Now, easy fix. Easy fix. Go to... I'll show you. And you're probably saying, well, yeah, we know that, Mark. We're not stupid. Uh, but there are people out there that will watch that and go, never thought of that. So, obviously, on your sprue guide, where you've got your A, B, C, D, uh, just find your corresponding sprue, get some masking tape, wrap it round it, leave a little tail sticking up, and, and number A, number A, <laughs> school did I go to, uh, just to sort of get round that. So the uh, so the the actual uh, the instruction part gets a three out of five only a three out of five ding ding uh, ease of fit flash and ejector pin marks not really any not really any Look, I I haven't mentioned the mother so that must be good so that's a five out of five 
ease of fit? Is it a beginner kit? No, it's definitely not. You've got to have something about you to put it together. I know I've talked this kit up into a way that there might be, you know, a 14-year-old watching this video that goes, Mom, get me a Zundat. No, forget it. Right? <laughs> okay. You have got to have a little bit about you to actually put it together. And you've got to be able to read between the lines. But as a modeler, we do that anyway. All right. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, painting, obviously, that's down to that's down to artists. That's down to down to me. What would I what would I score the kit? What would I score the kit all together? Out, out of ten. Shall I do it out of ten? Kit instructions, ease of build. For a good modeler, good modeler, chuffing hell. Uh, for somebody that knows what they're doing, it's uh, 8.5. And the only thing that brings it down is the instruction book. That's literally it. As long as you manage your fiddly parts, you'll be absolutely fine. As long as you don't think, well, it tells me to put it on now, so I'm going to put it on. As long as you can read between lines, lovely, lovely smashing kit. Okay. If you're going to build it, if you're going to... Uh, or if you if you've got it in your stash, it's about 42, 45 quid, eBay, Amazon, and all them different kinds of places. If 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 the build sequence I've shown you has inspired you to go and build it, buy it, whatever, let me know in the comments. All right, it's always nice when uh, when you do get a little bit of feedback. What's up next? What's up next? Is that one? Okay. So that's the tack on. Uh, forklift with a little bit of a Volkswagen van that it's lifting up at the front. Why Why a forklift? Well, I actually drive one for a living, uh, amongst other things, but that's my mainstay. All right, so I do fancy something, doing something that's a little bit close to my heart. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. What we got? 56 minutes, an hour to review a chopping post build. Uh, but at the end of the day, if that's how long it takes, that's how long it takes. Stay safe, everybody. Take care. Don't forget to add a comment and a like. Let me know where you are, what you're doing. Uh, and until next time, catch you later. Cheers.